If I don't capture your attention in the next five seconds, you're not going to watch this video. Humans today have extremely short attention spans, thanks to the nearly unlimited number of ways to get instant gratification and pleasure. And because of that, web developers need to be obsessed with initial page load performance. If your website is slow, it will lose money because people won't get their instant gratification and then bounce. But achieving optimal performance is complex. Like, do you really understand things like largest contentful paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift? By the end of today's video, you'll understand what these are, but more importantly, how to measure and optimize them in your own project. And I'm not just talking about Lighthouse here, but I'll show you how to use some tools you've never heard of, like Unlighthouse and the new Web Vitals Chrome extension. And we'll use them to analyze popular websites in the real world, like Amazon, Google, and of course, Hub. In order to use these tools effectively, though, we first need to understand core web vitals. Let's start with largest contentful paint. Simply put, this metric is most important for measuring loading performance. When a website loads, it needs to fetch a bunch of assets from the internet somewhere, like your CSS, HTML, JavaScript, images, and videos. Initially, you'll get the first contentful paint, then gradually the web page will load all the images and videos, which will be your largest contentful paint. To achieve good performance, Google says you need to get to LCP within 2.5 seconds. Anything beyond 4 seconds is bad, and will likely have an impact on things like search engine optimization. The most basic way to analyze it is to open up the network tab in your browser and examine the network waterfall. This will show you how each asset is loaded, and you can identify bottlenecks because they'll have a really wide bar in the chart. So once you've identified an issue, how do you actually optimize for largest contentful paint? Well, there's quite a few things we can do. The first and most obvious thing is to reduce the resource load time. If you have massive images and assets, they're going to take longer to load. Make sure your images are compressed, and you likely want to use modern formats like WebP. Same thing goes for fonts, and you should only use the bare minimum number of fonts that you need to render the page. That's step one, but in production, you'll also want to make sure you're serving your assets from a content delivery network. If you deploy to a place like Firebase or Vercel, it'll handle all the CDN magic for you automatically. The other big potential issue is render blocking Java for example, maybe you need to run some JavaScript before you display the actual image in the page, which will delay LCP. You should try to avoid this at all costs, and it's one of the reasons that server-side frameworks like Next.js have taken favor over single-page applications like plain React. Because on initial page load, single-page applications need to run a bunch of JavaScript before they can render the main content. That's good to know, but there's at least one more cool optimization we can make. In modern browsers, you can optimize resource priority by using preload links to make sure that important assets are discovered first. In addition, you can change the fetch priority on images to either high or low, so that low priority images at the bottom of the page won't get loaded before the more important ones. Unfortunately though, largest contentful paint isn't the only thing we need to worry about. We also have first input delay, which measures interactivity. A website needs to have a first input delay of 100 milliseconds or less, and at 300 milliseconds becomes bad. What it's measuring is the amount of time it takes from the moment a user interacts with the page, like when they click on a button, to the time it takes the browser to process event handlers for that interaction. Basically, you don't want a website to render if the actual things on it don't work. Measuring it is a little more tricky, but I'll show you how to do it in just a minute with the new Web Vitals plugin. And basically, the only way to optimize it is to reduce your JavaScript execution time. But one does not simply just get rid of their JavaScript. You can use tools like Web Workers and Party Town to move some of your JavaScript into a worker, or most JavaScript frameworks have the option for lazy loading, like React Lazy, for example, or there are frameworks like Quick that are optimized for instant interactivity by using highly aggressive lazy loading. But that brings us to our final metric, cumulative layout shift. It measures visual stability, or in other words, elements on the page shouldn't be jumping around in unexpected ways. You can measure it by generating a lighthouse report in Chrome DevTools, or with the Web Vitals extension as we'll see in a minute. One of the easiest ways to get bad CLS is to use images without dimensions. When using images, they should always have a width and height, or alternatively, use the CSS aspect ratio property. That's usually an easy fix unless you have responsive images that need to change their aspect ratio based on the viewport. In that case, you'll likely want to use source set to use different images under different conditions. In addition, you might get bad CLS as a result of advertisements being injected into the website or from poorly designed animations that try to do too much. We could talk all day about performance, but I think these three metrics are the most important to understand. Now that you know how they work, let's do some real-world analysis. The Chrome team at Google just released a new Web Vitals extension. Go ahead and install it, and then also go to the settings and enable console login. After that, go to your favorite web page like fireship.io and open up the console. You'll notice 
notice that we now get console logs for CLS and LCP. When it comes to largest contentful paint, it will tell us exactly which element is affecting that metric, which is extremely important because that's the thing you want to optimize. In addition, it will break down the time for its subparts, like time to first byte and element render delay. Then when it comes to layout shift, it will give us the elements in the DOM that are affecting that metric. So we might want to investigate those and see if we can do anything to optimize them. If we then click on something, we'll also get a log for first input delay, and we'll also get measurements for any interactions thereafter. And this will allow you to pinpoint any bottlenecks with interactivity. I've only been using this extension for a couple days now, but it's been a game changer for analyzing performance on my own website, primarily because it's so good at pinpointing the exact things that need to be fixed. But when you have a website that has hundreds or thousands of different pages, it's impossible to go through and analyze performance on every single page. And that's why you should know about this other tool called Unlighthouse. It's an open source tool that runs a Google Lighthouse report on every single page in your website, and it does everything in parallel, so it only takes a couple of minutes to analyze hundreds of pages. To run it, simply create a new directory and then run npx unlighthouse with your website address. It'll bring up a UI to show you how bad your website performance is in real time. And while I was happy to find that most pages had great performance, there were some unexpected pages that had very poor performance, and I never would have known that otherwise. I thought that was pretty interesting, so I went ahead and ran unlighthouse on a variety of popular websites. First, I tried amazon.com. I expected it to have relatively poor performance just because it's relatively complex with tons of images, but it actually did quite well. Although when using the Web Vitals plugin, I noticed a lot of cumulative layout shift issues on Amazon. Google, as expected, performed very well because they're the ones that create all these performance rules in the first place, and almost every major website I analyzed, including Reddit and Hub, all performed extremely well, with an average performance of around 90. The one website that really crushed it in performance, though, is astro.build, the homepage for the Astro framework. It almost got perfect 100s across the board, so it really does live up to its claims for awesome performance. What's cool about Unlighthouse, though, is that it also has an SDK, so you can integrate it into your continuous integration pipeline as well. If you want to learn more about stuff like this, become a pro member at Fireship.io for even more content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.